good afternoon dear students um, today we will start a new topic called lines and angles now before i proceed further you can a couple of you please confirm that you are able to hear my voice very clearly and yes, able sir. to view the view the screen properly yes, okay great yes, thanks for the confirmation <clears throat> now if you recall that to draw a straight line you need to have minimum of two points that means to draw a straight line uniquely you need to um, you know have minimum two points given to you All right now <clears throat> what we are going to discuss in, uh, in 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 this session is that that we will discuss about the angles okay and angles formed by straight lines that's why i bring that point of straight lines so uh, when an angle formed angle formed when two lines intersect each other right so for example uh, you know uh, if i <clears throat> if i draw a straight line in green color okay and another straight line in blue color if you see you know these two straight lines when they intersect then what we say that angle formed and this is one angle formed correct now from where the concept of angle came i just want to give you a couple of examples and then you will understand that okay why angles uh, from where that angle came now you know earlier days uh, you know it is happening today also but the fundamental point it came is that you know uh, earlier days when there is uh, you know c uh, in the in, in the c sword you will you will see there are lighthouse right i hope you have observed in any of the c swords there are lighthouse correct or not and in that lighthouse so from that lighthouse what you see is that you know the light what is actually being uh you know um, focused on the sea to just to know that how uh, you know the you know the ships are actually being traversed for example you know if you look into uh, uh you know in the one so suppose if you see this is one lighthouse okay from that lighthouse you know the lights are actually coming like this and and what you see is that in the sea shore you know that lighthouse is there and in the sea middle in the sea what you will see is that there are uh, you know the ships suppose the ships is one position is the point a and after some point after some time it actually come to another point b then what happen how you will find the displacement it is very difficult to find the displacement by measuring the distance because it is in the sea water here all are sea water so you really cannot you know physically go there and measure the distance between a and b but from the sea shore we can find the displacement angular displacement actually at one instant of time it was in position a and after some time it actually goes to you know position b then you can measure this you know the angular displacement and that is the fundamental concept behind angles so that means what when there is an incident you know there is an uh, two rays actually intersect which actually i mentioned at a straight line then an angle formed now there is a fundamental uh, you know point eventually comes is that that if the angle forms how we are going to measure these angles dear students to a measurement of the angles there are uh, some procedures to measurement of the angles and there are different systems to measurement of the angles one system you are aware of that is the degree measurement similarly there are radian measurement and we will discuss all these things later because this is not exactly the context of our session today but if you want to know that how angle are measured in degree measurement radian measurement and what is the relationship between them okay uh, you can follow my other video lectures which is available both in the online uh, uh, learning platform at konarclasses.com or in the youtube 
you just give Konar classes, you know, trigonometry, you will get, uh, you know, good amount of lectures there. But what we are going to discuss, we are going to discuss the different types of angles and the, you know, several uh, related axioms and theorems that we are going to discuss. Now, I explained to you what is the fundamental purpose, uh, you know, uh, that, that we should study angle. But think about, <clears throat> you know, whenever you have done uh, some kind of a, you know, school project, okay, and, uh, you know, you are constructing a hut uh, for your school project, then using the bamboo sticks, then imagine how you make it. Uh, you know, you would keep some of the sticks parallel to each other and some sticks, uh, you know, you kept in the slanting manner, right? Whenever an architect has to draw a plan for a multi-storied building, okay, the architect has to draw intersecting lines and parallel lines at different angles. Without the knowledge of the properties of these lines and angles, do you think that architect can draw the layout of the building? It is not possible. In science also, you study the properties of light by drawing the ray in diagram. For example, to study the refraction property of light when it enters from one medium to another medium, you use the properties of intersecting lines and parallel lines. Okay, for example, if you go to mechanics, when two or more forces act on a body, you draw the diagram in which the force are actually represented by directed line segment to study the net effect of the force on the body. Right. So these are the different, uh, you know, applications, uh, you know, uh, where we need to use uh, angles and its properties. Today, what we are going to discuss, dear students, that first we need to discuss the basic terms and definitions. So that is the first point what we are going to do is discuss is that basic terms and definitions. <clears throat> you know, um, as I was telling that um, when we have a line segment, okay, so uh, the, in the line segment, uh, you know, there is a uh, initial point and there is a terminal point, okay. So, <clears throat> and this line segment is also defined as a ray. Okay, so for example, uh, you know, if I draw a, a line segment, something like this, so if I draw in the green color, you see, this is a line segment, what I draw in the uh, green color. So, uh, you know, the line segment, uh, you know, if we can call this as AB, so suppose this initial point is A and this terminal point is B. So AB is a line segment and this is also called a ray. Now, the point is that generally uh, we will, um, you know, denote this AB something like this. Okay. This AB, uh, you know, a straight line bar on top of it is denotes that it is a straight line. Okay. Now, and sometime also we describe these, uh, you know, uh, lines just, uh, you know, small letters. Suppose we can define that line as L. Okay, that L symbolize this, you know, the line segment AB. Now, so as we just discussed, that angle is formed when two rays originate from the same endpoint. Okay. The rays making an angle are called the arms of the angles and the end point is called the vertex of the angle. So, for example, dear students, so if we have, <clears throat> you know, another uh, ray, something like this, you know, uh, suppose uh, this we defined as the end point is C, then AB and AC are known as the arms, okay, of the angle. And the point A is called the vertex of the angle. So what you say, dear students, that AB, okay, and AC, they are the arms 
arms of the angle and what we see is that this vertex A okay the point A actually what I say is that the end point is called the vertex of the angle in point A is called a vertex of the so there are uh, you know there are arms and there are vertex now <clears throat> these are the two different attributes of the angle attributes means so when you say that i have an angle so what are the arms then you can say okay for this you know diagram what we see there we see that ab and ac are the arms what is the vertex of the angle point a is the vertex of the angle so now i just want to quickly uh, touch base on the angles what you already studied earlier classes that is called acute angle then we define as the uh, right angle then we discuss about the obtuse angle and and then we can discuss about the straight angle all these things we will be discussing so what is acute angle dear students if you recall that an angle uh, which is uh, less than 90 degree that is called acute angle correct so now when i say less than 90 degree so that degree is the unit of measurement of this angle and as i was telling you that how that measurement of that angle happens based on different units that is not the uh, topic of the discussion for today okay what is the topic of the discussion is that is that what are the different type of angles and there are relevant properties so the first one is that acute angle so how acute angle looks like acute angle So acute angle is something looks like something like this you know if you have you know so whenever this angle what you see if we just a minute if we measure this angle as x and always in context here i'll tell you dear students the angles are most, always measured in anti clockwise direction then we call this angle is actually positive if it is measured in the clockwise direction we measure it as negative so here what we see the value of x should be 0 degree less than x less than 90 degree then we call it as an acute angle then the next point is that right angle So in right angle, dear students, what happens is that, you know, there are two perpendicular lines. When this angle is actually, you know, uh, 90 degree, then we call it as a right angle. So that means if we say this is Y, then Y has to be 90 degree, then we call it as a right angle. Next point, what is coming is that obtuse angle. So if I write here obtuse angle, So the obtuse angle looks like something like this. When the angle, you know, is, you know, more, more than, than 90 degree, less than 180 degree. Correct, exactly. More than 90 degrees. So if we say it as a Z, so what we can say is that 90 degree less than Z, less than 180 degree, then we call it as an obtuse angle. Then next one is that called straight angle. Straight angle is something when the angle is actually 180 degree. So how we can define that 180 degree? So straight line. Uh, exactly. It will form a you know straight line. In fact, you know, 
uh, the moment we are discussing that uh, you know uh, the straight angle straight angle so whenever there are two arms so it is better to give an arrow here also you can give arrow of these two arms okay now this is the angle if we define this angle as uh, you know s then what we see is that s is equal to 180 degree that is called a straight angle and another angle uh, is there that we call it as a reflex angle when the angle is in between 180 degree to 360 degree so how it will be let me show you okay So for example, we have one line like this, one arm and another arm like this and this is the arrow and when you measure the angle something like this, okay. So then we call that is a reflex angle. Suppose we define this angle as T. Then 180 degree is less than t is less than 360 degree so these are the uh, five different uh, you know uh, types of angles acute angle right angle obtuse angle straight angle and reflex angle now the point is that what we are going to discuss is that an acute angle is measured between 0 to 90 degree whereas right angle is exactly equal to 90 degree an angle greater than 90 degree but less than 180 degree is called obtuse angle also recall that a straight angle is equal to 180 degree an angle which is greater than 180 degree but less than 360 degree is called reflex angle now in addition to this there are two more angles you know uh, you know two angles whose sum is 90 degree are called complementary angles and two angles whose sum is 180 degree are called supplementary angles so that means what we understood the two angles In complementary angles, so suppose two angles x and y are said to be complementary angles if x plus y is equal to 90 degree. Okay, if x plus y is equal to 90 degree, then it implies that x and y are complementary angles. Now, another angles, you know, two angles whose sum is 180 degree are called supplementary angles. So let me show you to here. So if x plus y is equal to 180 degree this implies x and y are supplementary angles correct <clears throat> now the next point what you are going to discuss is that is called the adjacent angles so so what is adjacent angles you know two angles are adjacent if they have a common vertex 
a common arm and their non common arms are on different sides of the common arm so what is a perfect example and illustration of this thing adjacent angle is something like this so let me go to the next page and so if you look into this particular you know no diagram so what we see is that uh, the definition of the adjacent angles is something like this if they have a common vertex okay two angles are adjacent okay suppose uh, you know we define x and y are adjacent suppose this angle is x and this angle is y they will be adjacent if they both of them both the angles have the common vertex b here okay a common arm you know bd is a common arm correct and their non common arms are on different sides of the common arm that means what if one is bc is one arm okay then the other other arm ab should be the other side of you know bd with respect to bc then we call it as an adjacent angles correct dear students that here we can say x and y are adjacent angles because they have a common vertex they have a common arm so what is the arms what is what are the arms of the angle x bd and bc and what are the arms of the angle y it is bd and ab so they have a common arm that is bd belongs to both the angles x and y and what is the vertex of the angle x it is the point b and what is the vertex of the angle y it is the point b should they have the same vertex a common vertex i say you know common arms one common arms and the other two arms bc and ab are in the opposite side with respect to the common arm then we can say it is an adjacent angle okay now in this adjacent angle what we can say is that the angle abc is definitely equal to angle abd plus angle dbc so obvious that is quite obvious that means if we define this angle you know this angle as z then what we can say is that z is equal to x plus y okay z is equal to x plus y now um, the point is that um, if the non common arms there is a special case that is that if the non common arms as you see what are the non common arms ba and bc okay if they form a line okay if they form a line then how it looks like okay so suppose that ba and bc they form a lines so what it looks like so it will looks like something like this so z will be 180 degree correct in that at that time z will be 180 degree absolutely correct you are so and it has a you know name for this type of uh, you know angles okay this kind of arrangement you know these two angles here you see that abd and dbc are called linear pair of angles so this is known as the linear pair of angles so let me use a different color it is called linear pair of <coughs> angles i hope it is clear so far dear students that what we discuss so far is that adjacent angles okay uh, and 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 the linear pair of angles so this is what you can define at the adjacent angles
and as you see this thing is that linear pair of angles okay dear students so now uh, let's move on and then uh, we are going to discuss our next uh, case is called the you know vertically opposite angles so let's understand what is vertically opposite angles so <clears throat> So let me first explain you with respect to a you know um, a representative uh, diagram. So if you look into uh, the diagram, what I just going to place it in front of you. So what you see here, dear students, is that that AB and CD, these two lines are intersect each other, and they intersect each other at the point O. You know there are two pairs of vertically opposite angles. So what are the two pairs? One is that, you know, uh, this one you see AOD and BOC, and um, other pairs is that BOD and COA. We will see after some time that vertically opposite angles are equal to each other. That means what? If this angle is X, it's this angle should also be Y. X, sorry, X. If this angle is y, then this angle should also be y. So, <clears throat> so the point is that the moment we see that A O D and B O C are one pair of vertically opposite angles, then the obviously the other pair should be B O D and C O A. That is quite obvious. Okay. Now, the next point what we are going to discuss is that intersecting lines and non-intersecting lines okay <clears throat> so let me explain you by means of a diagram about that intersecting lines and non-intersecting lines Before we will discuss about the intersecting and non-intersecting lines, so let me uh, lock it so that you can refer it later properly. Okay, now as you see that intersecting line PQ and RS, uh, you know, they intersect at a point. That is why it is called an intersecting lines. Whereas when you see the, uh, the non-intersecting lines, that other one that, uh, you know, PQ and RS, if you see that if you extend up to infinite, you will never find a point where both the straight lines are intersecting and that is what is called non-intersecting lines. But here you see that PQ and RS, they are intersecting at a point, hence it is known as an intersecting lines, okay? And uh, <clears throat> one thing to be noted that the length of the common perpendicular at different points on these parallel lines, those are in non-intersecting lines are equal, okay? So this equal length is called the distance between the two parallel lines. What does it mean? Suppose you take a point here on that line PQ, 
and from here you draw a perpendicular. So if you draw a perpendicular, so this is the perpendicular and suppose uh, you choose that point um, on the PQ as A and whatever you get in the RS as B, then AB is known as the, you know, uh, the length of the uh, length between, you know, the, the distance between these two parallel lines, okay. And that one is always constant when it is a, uh, you know, uh, it, 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 when these two lines are parallel. So now the next point, what I'm going to discuss with you, dear students. Uh, is sorry, called, I have a doubt. Yeah, please. Thank you for asking question. Please do let me know. Sir, do non-intersecting lines always have to be parallel? Yes. As long as the two dimensional geometry is concerned, two non-intersecting lines, if they have to be parallel. But that statement is not, uh, you know, completely valid when we discuss about three-dimensional geometry. It may be possible that uh, there are two non-intersecting uh, lines and uh, non-parallel as well. Okay, so how we know? Though it is little out of context, but let me tell you, so that we will discuss, uh, that you will study when you will be in your class 12. Suppose... Uh, you know, uh, there are two different planes, okay? Uh, and one straight line is something like this in this plane. Suppose you, you put a pane on a table, okay? This is a pane on a table, on your study table. And there is another pane, you keep it at the floor, okay? This pane, you keep it, kept it at the floor. Or you can consider this as stick, it is little larger than the pin size. So there are two sticks, one on the top of your study table and one in the floor. Okay, and it, this is their orientation. Suppose, uh, you know, CD is a stick which is in the floor and AB is the stick which is on the study table. Then if you see, they are uh, non-parallel, uh, right? Correct or not? It looks like they are non-parallel. Yes, sir. But they will not intersect also, isn't it? The stick what you kept on top of your study table and the stick what you kept in the floor, they will not intersect each other, will they? No, sir. Oh. So, so this is in context of three-dimensional geometry. But as long as the two-dimensional geometry is concerned, your statement is absolutely correct. If there are non-intersecting, you know, if there are you know, intersecting lines, then the distance between them is zero, for example, which is in the left hand side case. Okay. And if there are two non intersecting lines, your exact question is that was that the two non intersecting lines are always parallel? Yes, as long as the two dimensional geometry is concerned, they are always parallel. Does it answer your question, uh, Srivali? Yes. Okay, great. So uh, now what we are going to discuss, dear students, so just give me a second, let me uh, mark it so that you can follow it later. Okay, the, our next point is that pair of linear pair of angles. So we will discuss about the pair of angles and eventually the linear pair of angles. So what is that? The pair of angles is, uh, <clears throat> um, we have already discussed about that complementary angles, supplementary angles, adjacent angles, linear pair of angles. Okay. Um, you know, can you find some relationship between uh, between these pairs? So that is the you know but the point we are going to discuss now. So let me go to a next page and discuss about this thing. Dear students, so far it's absolutely clear. All of you, could you please confirm that it is absolutely clear so far? Everything you understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. okay, great. So, <clears throat> as I was telling that, um, you know, we discussed, so far we discussed about complementary angles, supplementary angles, adjacent angles, linear pair of angles. Now, uh, let us think whether we can find some relationship between these angles. Now, um, 
uh, let us first find when there are linear pair of angles okay so what is a linear pair of angles what we can say is that uh, <clears throat> you know if you recall that linear pair of angles we have uh, discussed in the previous one if you see the linear pair of angles so this one i want to discuss that what is the you know the uh, <clears throat> the relationship between them is that let me first bring that uh, you know particular diagram if you look into this diagram dear students so there are two angles what we see one is that angle aoc and angle boc and also there is an angle called aob okay now obviously uh, we can write that angle aoc plus angle boc is equal to angle aob obviously we can write right now what is the measurement of the angle aob so what i was telling is that we can write is that <coughs> angle aoc angle a o c plus angle b o c is equal to angle a o b correct now what is the measurement of the angle a o b that is 180 degree we have learned it yes, then from here what we can say is that angle a o c plus angle b o c is equal to 180 degree that implies angle AOC plus angle BOC is equal to 180 degree. Correct or not? Now, the point is that the statement what I'm going to make, dear students, is that if a ray stand on a line, then the sum of two adjacent angles so formed is 180 degree and that is what we actually called as a linear pair of angles correct so if a ray stands on a line so let me write it down if a, a ray stands on a line then the sum of two adjacent angles then the sum of two adjacent angles so formed is 180 degree so now when uh, if you recall the definition of the linear pair of angles when the sum of two adjacent angles is 180 degree they are called a linear pair of angles correct yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. now <clears throat> So let's, uh, you know, um, you know, let's look into um, uh, the next point uh, is that what the next point, what I'm going to discuss is that if the sum of the two adjacent angles is 180 degree, then the non-common arms of the angles form a line. Okay. So the next point, what I'm going to say is that if sum of two adjacent angles if the sum of
adjacent angle is 180 degree then the non common arms of the angles form a line then then the non common arms of the angles form a line so it is actually if you see it is uh, you know converts of the uh, you know statement if you look into the, the diagram what you see is that if the if this angle is we define as x and this is y we see that x plus y is equal to 180 degree correct or not okay then what are the non common arms it is oa and ob and oa and ob we it is form a line as if if we take the three points point a point o and point b they are collinear on the same line correct or not okay now the next point what i am going to discuss dear students it is uh, i mentioned it some time back that i will prove it now i am going to prove it this one the statement is that if two lines intersect each other then the vertically opposite angles are equal okay so i am going to uh, write down the statement first and then i am going to prove it if two lines intersect each other then the vertically opposite angles then the vertically opposite angles are equal okay so uh, let me uh, let me prove this one i want to prove this is actually a theorem and i want to prove this theorem look into this uh, diagram dear students which represents the statement what i just wrote the two lines ab and cd intersect each other at the point o okay then what are the vert vertically opposite angles one is aoc and bod they are vertically opposite to each other and the other angle is that uh, you know aod and boc what are the pairs of vertically opposite angles so aoc and bod so let me write it down let me write down the proof in a different color so two pairs of vertically opposite angles so what are the, what are the vertically opposite angles the first pair is that you know aoc and bod angle aoc and angle bod and the other pair is so you can give an arrow also so that you can notify and other one is that aod and boc angle aod and angle boc correct dear students now what we need to prove we need to prove that aoc is equal to bod and aod is equal to boc that is what we need to prove so let me write it down we need to prove we need to prove that 
angle AOC is equal to angle BOD and angle AOD is equal to angle BC. Now, if you look into the ray OA, stand on the line uh, CD, therefore, what we can say, angle AOC and angle AOD will be 180 degree, correct or not? So, let us give this a different angle's name is, angle AOC we define as X, angle um, AOD we define as Y, angle um, B -A -O, um, angle BOD we define as Z and angle, sorry, let me write Z properly, Z and angle BOC as T. What we need to prove? We need to prove that X is equal to Z and Y is equal to T. And you know, dear students, you can say, sir, it is so obvious. Just by inspection, I can say it is, uh, they, are, they are going to be equal. Obviously, right? But the point is that how to prove it, but we can prove it analytically using the properties what we have learned so far. So now if you look into uh, the statement, the statement what I am just reading it out and also write that ray OA stand on the line CD, correct or not? That ray, ray OA stand on the line CD. So from here what we can say? Obviously angle AOC and angle AOD should be equal to 180 degree linear pair of angles. So this implies angle AOC plus angle AOD is equal to 180 degree angle AOC what we name it as we name this as X and angle AOD is equal to Y X plus Y is equal to 180 degree so this is one thing we have achieved correct dear students now let's see that angle AOD and angle BOD they should also be uh, you know 180 degree why because the ray DO stand on the line AB Correct. So what we can say is that ray DO or OD stand on the line AB. So from here what we can say? We can say is that angle AOD, sorry let me write properly. So angle AOD and BOD angle AOD plus angle BOD that should also be equal to 180 degree so that implies what this implies what is angle AOD AOD is Y and BOD is Z that is equal to 180 degree. Correct, my dear students. So now, if we combine these two statement that x plus y is equal to 180 degree and y plus z is equal to 180 degree, so what we can conclude? So x plus y is equal to 180 degree and y plus z is equal to 180 degree you know, tells that x plus y is equal to y plus z. This implies x is equal to z. And that's what we wanted to prove. That AOC is equal to BOD. That's what. So this implies what? This implies angle AOC is equal to angle BOD. Dear students, all of you understood very well.
any difficulty please do let me know Shivali, absolutely clear hello Manishika yes sir absolutely clear yes sir great fine so now in the similar manner we can prove the other one right that uh, angle uh, you know um, aod is equal to uh, you know uh, angle uh, boc we can prove in the similar manner so now the next point what we are going to discuss is uh, actually we are going to solve some problem together okay so what i will suggest to you is that please open your notebook and do this problem along with me okay <clears throat> So the first question I'm going to give is that, um, Kalpita, is it absolutely clear uh, to you the proof what I have given? Uh, yes, sir. OK, OK, great. Thanks. Srivali, I didn't hear anything from you. Is it clear? Absolutely. Yes, sir. OK, great. Thanks. So now, uh, because uh, these confirmations are important, because we are going to solve some problem, we'll solve this problem together. And, um, and, and I'll also as i said that you please open your notebook the first question what i'm going to uh, show you something like this let me first show you the diagram you see the diagram here dear students there are two uh, you know intersecting lines as you see in the diagram yes sir. okay that yes. line pq and rs uh, intersect each other at the point o okay so let me write down so this is question number one. Lines PQ and RS intersect each other at the point O. Now, it is given that angle POR is to angle ROQ. Okay. So, if angle POR okay if angle POR is to angle ROQ is to angle ROQ is equal to 5 is to 7 5 is to 7 find all the angles what you see Okay, so angles means is that you need to find the value of, I can write find all the angles. Find find all the angles. Angle POR is 75, angle ROQ 105. Yeah. Correct, correct, you are absolutely correct. And, and the moment you observe this, then the other are very, uh, you know, vertically opposite angles, no? Yes, yes sir. sir. So angle POR, you know, if we see that angle POR is X, if we say not X, if we define POR as 5X, then uh, you know roq should be 7x so 5x plus 7x is equal to 180 degree linear pair of angles correct dear students so from here we get 12x is equal to 180 degree and from here we find the value of x correct now hmm? so 
x is equal to 180 degree by divided by 12. And as you find this thing, so from here you can find the value of 5x and 7x. So 5x equal to 5 into 180 by 12. So this implies the angle POR that is equal to 5x that is equal to 5 into 180 degree divided by 12 and if we compute that is coming as 75 degree and angle in fact you know there is another way you can find it out angle um, ROQ either you can find 7x or 180 degree minus 75 degree that is also fine because they are linear pair of angles now minus 75 degree so that is equal to 105 degree so the moment we get this thing um, you know uh, por so obviously uh, you know you know soq that implies angle soq should also be 75 degree because it is vertically opposite to angle por and the moment we say ROQ is equal to, uh, you know, 105 degree, that implies angle POS, you know, uh, that is equal to 105 degree because it is vertically opposite to the angle ROQ. So we found this, all these angles. Good. Now let's go to the next question. So as you see, dear students, um, the diagram, and let me write the question. So this is question number two. A ray OS stands on a line POQ. Ray OR and OT are angle bisector of POS and SOQ respectively. A ray OR, a ray OR and OT are angle bisectors. of angle POS and angle SOQ respectively. Okay. Now the question is that we need to find ROT. So the question is that find the angle R O T. Is the question clear dear students? Absolutely clear? Yes sir. Mm. Sir is it 45 degrees? You are saying it is? 45 degrees. It is 45 degrees. Okay. Uh, not really. But. Uh, 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 
Um, you see in the, just by looking also, it doesn't look like it is a 45 degree, isn't it? It's 90 degrees, sorry, it's a 90 degree. Huh, okay, 90 <laughs> degrees, absolutely correct. So let us start solving it, okay? So what we see, dear students, here in this question, that um, ray OS stands on a line POQ and uh, OR and OT are the angle bisector of POS. So is, as OR is the angle bisector of POS, then if we assume that angle POR is X, then angle ROA should also be equal to X because RO is the OR is the angle bisector of POS. In the similar manner, that OT is the angle bisector of SOQ. So if we assume that SOT is equal to Y, then uh, obviously that uh, TOQ should also be equal to Y. Correct or not? Okay, great. Very good. So then what we get is that um, one thing, uh, what we see is that 2x plus 2y is equal to 180 degree, right? So that is the quite obvious, 2x plus 2y is equal to 180 degree. And then um, what we can say is that, <clears throat> that, you know, if you see, this is a, uh, you know, um, uh, linear equations in two variables we found two equations correct correct or not so now if you see that um, 2x plus 2y is equal to 180 degree and from here what we can say is that x plus y is equal to 90 degrees correct or not and what is x plus y? x plus y from here, what you can say is that it is ROS, angle ROS plus angle SOT that is equal to 90 degree. That implies what ROS plus SOT is nothing but angle ROT that is equal to 90 degree and we are able to uh, find the value of the angle ROT. Kalpita, it is absolutely clear to you? Yes, sir. Okay, great. <clears throat> okay, now let's um, concentrate on the third question. And um, I'm just going to uh, give you the problem first and then I'll write the problems. Let me first give you the you know, pictorial diagram of this one. So in this diagram, that OP, OQ, OR, and OS are four rays, as you see. Okay. You need to prove that that POQ plus QOR plus uh, you know SOR plus POS is equal to 360 degree. So, may I ask you anyone? Sir, we, I'm sorry. Can we just say that, so can we just say that the sum of angles around a point is 60? Yes, but how we can prove by means of the axioms and theorem we learned today? Okay, so let me write okay. down the pair, you know, uh, you know, problem statement first. So here is the problem statement is that <clears throat> OP, OQ, OR, and OS are four rays, are four, four rays. Prove that. Prove that angle POQ 
angle POQ plus QOR POQ plus angle QOR plus angle <coughs> SOR plus angle POS is equal to 360 degree. So dear students, let me give you this problem as an assignment, okay? So over here, could we say, I mean, could we uh, say that if we draw, extend a straight line from the point O, so that the, uh, let's say that straight line, uh, the end of that straight line is A, so AQ is a straight line, then we can say that AQ, because like OP is uh, a linear uh, pair, so it's 180, yeah. and the, the, the angle AOS, SOR, and ROQ are angles on a straight line, which is equal to 180. So 180 plus 183. Correct. What you are saying is absolutely correct. I, I, I do understand your point. But um, what I say is that, you know, uh, you know, you can give me a write-up and others also, that how you are exactly proving it. Because these logical uh, steps are very important. Uh, that you are going to do a construction, right? Small construction, right? Yes, sir. Then based on that, you are going to prove it. So let me give you this as an assignment. And uh, you can, um, you know, send it to me. After the class, you can take some half an hour and send it to me. Now, dear students, is that no DPPs you need to solve today. Okay. So in the day after tomorrow, when we'll have our next session, then we'll be discussing some more uh, topics uh, related to lines and angles. And after that, we'll start solving the DPPs. Meanwhile, you can start uh, uploading the DPPs for physics, chemistry, and biology, the relevant topics, uh, as I informed earlier. And with respect to this, um, I do not have any other uh, points now. Uh, I would like to conclude the class uh, now. If you have any specific question to me, please do let me know. All right, dear students, thank you very much. Uh, we'll have our class on day after tomorrow at the same time. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.